Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Okay, so now we're on part three here of, of uh, analyzing this tract, and um, we've just covered the fact that we've, we've got to do a Huey here, and then we we have to uh, get on the Jesus plane, and um, and we've talked about the fact that that repentance and faith are both gifts of God. The Bible clearly tells us this. Um, this tract now launches into the wrap up phase. I call it. Um, it pretty much goes on and uh, says that um, everyone who calls in the name of the Lord is saved. That's pretty standard language in most tracts. Uh, God isn't a liar. God can't lie. He won't lie. Uh, you need to ask Jesus to save you. And then we go into uh, saying the sinner's prayer. Okay, This is where we go read this prayer. Um, call in the name of the Lord with these or similar words. And Jesus will become your Savior and Lord. Um, and I put in parentheses, unless, of course, you don't show any biblical signs of regeneration, at which time we will declare that you have Jesus made Jesus Savior, but you haven't made him Lord um, to solve the problem of why your behavior in life hasn't changed since making a decision for Jesus. And then it goes on and it welcomes you to the family of God and says, if you were sincere, then you've just made the most important decision of your life. You can be sure. And, you know, to which I say, wow, you know, our surety and salvation is now dependent upon our sincerity uh, in making a decision to follow Jesus. I don't know where that comes from in the Bible. It certainly isn't in the Bible that I'm reading. Um, you know, what, what, the, what determines whether we're sure goes back to the beginning in the book of 1 John is that we look in our lives and see if there's any true fruit of repentance. Uh, there's any true fruit of uh, wanting to be with other Christians and and uh, and walking in the light, and not in the dark, and and not loving the world, and and coming out and being separate. You know, these are all things that that are talked about in the Book of First John, which is what we reference. That's how you know that you can be sure uh, that you have eternal life, uh, is that you're showing these fruits. Um, so, you know, the, the, the track kind of goes on now, and, and, and I kind of find it pretty interesting here is that, you know, you see the little picture over there. we got to give Jesus the wheel. we got to hand him the wheel because now we've decided to follow him, so now we need to let him, uh, you know, uh, basically drive our lives. And, um, and on the next page, it, uh, it says that, um, of course, God keeps his promises. You know, again, it says God's not a liar. And uh, God heard your prayer, and it says that God recorded your commitment. And they cite uh, Luke uh, 10.20, Rejoice that your name names are written in heaven. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> God recorded your commitment? That's ridiculous. Um, it's, it's, again, it's I did this, so God did that. It's man-centered. Um, what about Revelation 13.8? All who dwell on the earth will worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been slain. Uh, Ephesians 1.4, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him in love. Um, to make a, a, a statement that you know God has now recorded your commitment and your decision to follow Jesus is ridiculous. Um, then we go on to the Baptist recording phase, and, and, and I think that this is funny. It's just in case God didn't get it written down in the Book of Life correctly, at least the Baptist would have a record of it. We've got your uh, spiritual birth certificate right there. Eternal life birth certificate. I, I don't even know what to say about this, um, except the fact that it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing that the North American Mission Board... Uh, a Southern Baptist Convention funded uh, organization uh, has put an eternal life birth certificate in a tract and we're supposed to mail that in along with our um, our decision form okay that of course is going to uh, record all our statistics 
Um, you know, and then and on top of that, it says to wrap things up. It says, uh, "With Christ, you're a winner." Um, you know, when we present the gospel like this, folks, when we present it in such a fact that we lower a high view of God and we raise and we elevate man and man's not so bad, he's a sinner, we uh, present sin as, as some sort of slight imperfection uh, in an otherwise basically good character, uh, when we dance around and we don't uh, talk about the fact that the wrath of God uh, does abide upon us uh, and that it is a command to repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it is not uh, a request. Um, it is something that we must do because that is the provision. That is the way God has decided to offer forgiveness. Uh, Jesus is the truth and the way and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by Him, and it is a command uh, that we believe on Him. Uh, when we make it relevant, when we water it down, when we uh, take away the offensive parts of the gospel um, that that people would believe um, and not be offended, um, then we essentially lose all the power of the gospel. The gospel is offensive. Uh, it is offensive to the sensibilities of man, uh, to believe that he is 100% uh, corrupt and that he cannot make a good decision and cannot make a good choice. Um, God has to save us. Salvation is of the Lord. We need to throw ourselves at God's mercy and we need to beg God to change us. We need to beg God to soften our hearts um, because we are spiritually discerned and we do not understand these things um, we cannot appeal to people's uh, uh, sense of intelligence. We need not to get them to understand the problem. They're dead. They're dead in their trespasses and sins. And It is only an act of God that can change them, that can change that heart. And so when we understand that, when we understand that God has to move and it isn't about man's choice and it really isn't about man's decision, then we're much less in danger of presenting the gospel in some relevant way. We're much less in danger of changing the message for you because you're a housewife or changing the message for you because you're an inner city black child or changing the message for you because um, you know, you're a liberal. I, you know, I don't know. It, it's just that um, God is God. We are not. Uh, we are sinful. We fall short of God and that uh, we are doomed without him. And there is only one way, and that is Christ, and that is to take that propitiation, that payment that was made on the cross for us, that bloody death that was suffered, and moreover, the fact that we are saved from the wrath of God. We are saved from God himself, because God is a just God. When, you know, when we don't present these things, um, then, yeah, we may get decisions. We may get people to join our churches. We may get people to fill our roles. Uh, we might be able to get show up, even give money and tithe, but unfortunately we've given them a false assurance of salvation, and we are in sin. We're sinning. We're telling people they're saved. We're, we're telling people that they're okay and they're good with God because they've uttered a prayer and they've said something sacrificial and sacramental, and, 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 and we've got them to sign a form, and, and they've got that on their on their nightstand, they got this stupid birth certificate on their nightstand, and they made a decision to follow Christ, but they live as practical atheists, and there's no fruit, and there's no regeneration in their lives. We're lying to them. We're dooming them to hell. We've got to tell them the truth. We've got to start putting tracts out there that tell the truth. And it doesn't matter what kind of numbers we get. Even Jesus himself said there will be few and there will be many. And I don't know why we've got to make it many, because man's smarter than God. You know, preach the gospel and let the chips fall where they may. And if they come, they'll come. The sheep will hear his voice. Thank you very much for listening. And I pray and I hope that this makes a difference in the way you evangelize and the way you think about our relationship with God. God bless you all. I once was lost, but now I'm found.